Moving on, should we talk cross country? Let's talk some cross country before we sign off. Now, cross country season really doesn't start yet. I mean, technically, it started this past weekend. We had some time trial type results. Mm -hmm. uh, but the real season doesn't start till like September 23rd, where we're going to see a lot of top teams compete in Virginia. And then we'll get more information in October. But like it, school started, so we got to start ranking them. And so we ranked. We got our rankings in for preseason on the men's and women's sides team. We'll start with the men's team rankings. And surprise, surprise, NAU preseason ranked number one. You were repping the shirt the other day in the I, office. Yeah, well, I was they're, proud. they're good. They're good at, they're good at running. <laughs> um, but on the men's side, there really, really isn't much surprise. NAU's one, BYU's two, Oklahoma State three, Stanford four. Those were also the podium teams last year. We, look, we moved BYU up to two over Oklahoma State because Oklahoma State one of their, lost one of their top returners. BYU returned everyone. Kenneth Rooks looks even better. So they throw in Kenny Rooks, who made the, the, the world team in the steeple. BYU will be NAU's number one challenger, and I don't even think it's going to be close. I don't think Oklahoma State or Stanford will be in the mix with NAU and BYU. This is going to be a repeat of dare I say it, the 2019 season where NAU lost. NAU was Gordon. Going, NAU was going for Gordon, the... Gordon! How dare you! NAU was going for the 4 P. They went into that season as the, the best team on paper, and then they lost to BYU. NAU now going for another 4 P. They're going to enter this season as the best team on paper, and BYU is going to be a team to challenge them. Now, I'm not saying the same result's going to happen, but there's going to be a lot of uh, PTSD you think so? For for Mike Smith and NAU because he's like, it's BYU again. Crap, we're going for the four P. Uh oh, they're they're gonna be good. So I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen, but we could see some deja vu, or we could see NAU finding a way to overcome that deja vu and get the win and pull off the four P. Um, NAU ran uh, at um, their home opener and they ran better than they did any other year before. So they look like they're firing on all cylinders. Um, I guess Wisconsin is the one team ranked fifth. They kind of can sneak up into the mix, maybe get on the podium. And I think the big surprise team that we have in our top ten is Texas. Yeah. Texas, they got a transfer from Stanford, Devin Hart, who's be all American. Uh, but Texas is our kind of non-conventional top ten team that we have ranked seventh on, on the, the men's side. Let's move over to the women's side. Now, the women's side is interesting. Women's rankings. NC State's going to stay one. Mm -hmm. They won last year. They returned pretty much everyone. They got Caitlin Tui, Kelsey Camille, one, two. They're, they're looking good. They're going to be the favorites. Florida, the team we have ranked fifth. Yeah. They weren't ranked at all. They didn't qualify for the meet. But they got a, a ton of New Mexico transfers. They got an Alabama transfer. They have the recipe to put together four strong women behind Parker Valby to potentially podium. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not going to be easy because some other teams in the mix. NAU looks good. They were sixth last year. They returned a bunch of women. Colorado was 11th last year, but they add in some transfers. Notably, they have a transfer from New Mexico. Uh, they got Marley Starlipper from NC State. They're going to be in the mix. And they also have a great incoming class. And they have well. good incoming class. Yeah. One team that's not listed here is New Mexico because Joe Franklin left New Mexico, so all the women also left, and they all got one. One went to Northern Arizona, one went to Colorado, uh, one went to Florida. So all the New Mexico women are basically the reason why the Floridas, NAU's, and Colorados yeah, it just all, kind of all shifted a little bit. Shifted to go up against NC State. So yeah. NC State was like, "All right, we beat New Mexico," and then New Mexico's like, "What if we just divide everyone up?" and go into Colorado, NAU, and Florida and see if that, one of those three, can be NC State. Uh, nice little game plan. Yeah. And then the big surprise here, which uh, the coaches did not really agree with, is I put Oregon second. They were 14th last year. Yeah, what, what was your thoughts on so this one? So the thought is there's some eligibility issues, I'll admit, because... I'm not sure the 100% the transfer rules, but there were some late additions to the Oregon roster, notably like Mia Barnett from mm -hmm. UCLA, who is a top 20 runner. And if Oregon gets another top 20 runner, you subtract their 
fifth woman and throwing her as a number one woman, it makes their team good enough to be a podium team. Okay. Now, there's likelihood that she won't be eligible, but things change. People, eligibility comes in and out. Like, yeah, I can run all of a sudden. So I looked at it. I was like, I look at their incoming transfers, international and and collegiate wise. Mm-hmm. You look at their 50, the way they, they put three women in the 1500 meter final. Mm-hmm. It's a 6K. This isn't a 10K. Right. It's going to be a sprint. If it starts off slow in a sprint, Oregon's going to have... I love how have... you said a 6K is a sprint. That's great. It Go is ahead. a sprint. It's a sprint. They're going to jog for 4K and then run a 2K <laughs> and try to break Jakob Ingebrigtsen's world record. <laughs> uh, but Oregon has... They don't have the, the, the talent when it comes to 5K, 10K, but they do have the talent when it comes to the, to the mile and 3K. And I think, you know... Jerry Schumacher and Shalene Flanagan, they're great. Co- they're good coaches, and I think they're going to find a way to take the talent that they have and put together a podium caliber team. Uh, and I think they're kind of overlooked right now. I think they're kind of just looking, oh, they got 14th last year. But, like, they have a bunch of women run sub-410. I was like, mm-hmm. that means something. I know it's 1,500. It's not the 6K. But I do believe mile times matter. You see great female milers every year find a way to finish All-American who aren't really notorious at running fast 5Ks. Um, and I think that could happen with Oregon because they have a bunch. They don't just have one. They're not relying on just one person. They got some depth. Now, if Mia Barnett doesn't run, then well, they're probably not going to finish second, but they could still finish top six. So we'll see. Once we see them run their full squad at Bill Dillinger, we'll make an assessment. Okay. So stay tuned. I went on a long rant. I did the rankings. No, I, I appreciate the breakdown. I'm educating and the thought you. Process. Yeah. No, that was great because I know there were a lot of questions on some of these rankings. So yeah, I'm glad that you are walking us through what was in your brain to give us these rankings right now. So and I it do make sense. And I do have a prediction. What's your prediction, Gordon? But I know if I announce the prediction, it won't happen. Okay, so don't say it. Just remember this episode, and then when it does happen, should I not? Gonna, and then be like, hey, Liv, remember that episode where I told you because the reason was in my head and I didn't want to say it? Don't say it. But Because the it. prediction is I'm ah, predicting no. something. No. Don't go there. I want to say it. But then you said it won't happen. So It won't you... happen. The reason why it won't happen is because the athletes will take that as motivation <laughs> and, then they will, and then it will go against what's going to happen. Okay. So say the opposite. I'm predicting a team won't qualify for nationals. And if I say, I don't think you're going to qualify for nationals, they're automatically going to qualify okay, for so nationals. Okay, so there's a team within the top ten. There's a team. On the, on the women's side or men's side? There's a men's team. They're not in my okay. top ten. For okay. a reason, they're not in my top ten. They're, I'm not, I don't think, they're a team that when people are like, wait a minute, they didn't make nationals? Everyone's going to be confused. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, so, cool. But if I say it. They're no, going to hear it, and I it's going to be poster board, and then they're going to make We're nationals. Good. Okay. So, so maybe I... The, nah, you, you did just enough. But here's the thing. You did just enough. Is it wrong, though, if I don't say it? Because that means I'm not helping them. I should help them and tell them that I don't no, believe No, because I'm them. curious. I, I want to know. But don't... I don't want to know right now. I want right. to wait until... All right, we'll keep this a secret. November, and then you hit me with... I should, I should write it down. How can we prove that I... We'll write it down. We'll date it. And then... I'll put it in an envelope. We'll make an envelope next podcast. We'll yes. seal it. And then it'll open the envelope of the team. Perfect. Let's do that. Okay, we'll do that. So be prepared. Yes. 